Hello, I have a very exciting package that I've just um, gone and picked up from the supermarket. I'm here in the countryside and I've had some yarn ordered here for a new and very exciting project and I am going to open it right now. I am currently wearing uh, my latest top. I'm not sure what to call this yet, but I've never done a top with just one shoulder before and then I added this little crochet edge. Oh, the color is really spectacular. Ooh, I like it. Look at this color. Oh, it's the perfect shade of pink. Ooh, I really like it. It's exactly the same color as my nail polish. This is going to be a cardigan, really oversized, really luxurious, nice and fluffy. I've realized something huge, which is that I do not have enough knitted cardigans in my closet at all. I've just been making sweater after sweater after sweater, but I really, really feel like I need like a good cardigan. And this is going to be the first of many, I hope, this season. I really feel like I want to focus on making cardigans. Um, this one, gonna be oversized, I think. Um, need to check like gauge. I've used this Borset Alpaca by Sun that's gone a lot before. I absolutely love it. I think it's such a nice yarn to work with. Um, but I'm gonna have to do some big design choices, but definitely gonna start today. Hey, we go. Oh, so sleepy, Kitty. We've just arrived back at the cabin and we put up these curtains and oh my God, what a difference curtains make. We have this project to just uh, make this whole cottage nicer, modernize it, paint it. There's so much stuff to do because in this cottage, it's been kind of a guest cottage and so nobody's lived here for many, many years. And now me and Yuki are pretty much staying here every summer. So we really just want to like make it really nice and freshen up. Um, so bit by bit starting that. All right, a five millimeter. So that's a US eight needle. That is what I am going to make my first gauge swatch with. Doing manly stuff. <laughs> oh, wow, one down. We do it in Finland. Hello. 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 Oi. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, hey. Have you Oh, you've got your knitting with you. Yes. <gasps> Okay, so I am working in Borset Alpaca, but so is my sister. I've uh, a little bit encouraged her because I have so many um, scrap yarns um, of these, lots of different colors. So she's gonna do like a striped sweater and I'm gonna do my cardigan. Um, and hopefully in this video, you'll see the end result of how it goes. <laughs> Alright, my swatch gauge is complete and seems to be that my gauge is exactly 15 stitches per 10 centimeters. So that's per 4 inches. So now I am ready to cast on.
Good morning. It is day two and I managed to knit quite a bit last night. This is going to be the upper back. I decided to go for like a dropped shoulder. Um, and then I've done like these increases here, which are going to be my shoulder seams. And now I'm going to work a little bit more. Um, and then I'm going to be picking up for the fronts. But so far, um, going very nicely. And it's also nice because I've been working these tops in like three millimeter needles and this is now five millimeter needles so it just feels like it's literally like flying by and going really quick It is the afternoon, we are sitting out on the porch knitting a little bit. I've come quite far. I've already, well, I can't really see it, but I'll show you. I've done uh, already my right uh, front and now I'm working on the second one, but I am wearing um, another sweater that I did in San Nesmos del Alpaca. This one I did on six millimeter needles. Um, so it's a little bit looser than the gauge I'm going for with this one, um, but I do really like this. I made it last summer um, with the intention to make it into a pattern but that has kind of been on hold but maybe I'll now <laughs> be motivated to make that into a pattern. So this is my progress so far so I've made this front here and now I'm working on this one. I think I need to add a little bit length to my upper back. I feel like it looks a little snug and I want like there to be so it's gonna be like this and then I'll connect everything so this is going to be the armhole but I think it looks a little small right now so I think I'm gonna add a bit of length here morning it is day three that I'm working on this card again and I made quite a bit of progress yesterday I finished both the right and the left front so now I've joined in everything together to form the body and uh, yeah, yesterday I was knitting a lot on this um, and just really, really want to get this finished. So I think I am going to be sitting out in the sun today, knit quite a bit. Luna is out for a little bit of a morning walk. Luna is usually the more shy one and she usually stays indoor, but now she's been more daring and courageous and she's been outside more, which is really nice to see. I think she likes it out here. Don't you, Luna? Yeah. Look, I just spotted there's like an insane mist coming over there. It's like a perfectly sunny day and this crazy dense mist coming in from the sea. Wow, it looks, I don't know, magical and a little bit scary, but very, very cool. A few moments later. Whoa. Whoa. The island, there, there's an just island there. Just completely disappeared. Insane. How's it going? Terrible. <laughs> Still in the grass. <laughs> You tried. <laughs> Some of you might remember that my sister last time, or last summer, started knitting this top. And ta-da! It is done. It's so nice. Very proud of you. I'm today wearing my stripe pipe sweater. This was done by Oti, it's one of the sample knitters. We are <laughs> matching, surprisingly. And let's see how far my sister has come with her sweater. Ooh, really far. Nice, the first stripe. So this will be like the ribbing that will be folded double. Ooh, I like the colors. Are you happy? Yes, I am. <gasps> nice, <laughs> exciting. Good morning. It is 
Wednesday today, which I think means that I've been now working on this cardigan for about a week. And this is how far I've come. So I've managed to finish one sleeve. I finished all the body and now I am working on this um, placket or whatever you call it, uh, which is going very slow, but I think it's gonna make all the difference. It's gonna be like really, really nice. And hopefully today I get to try it on. I'm gonna try to finish this whole uh, button placket thing. Um, of course, I'm in the countryside here in the cottage, so I forgot to bring any buttons with me, but I think I'm gonna instead do like these snap buttons. Um, so I don't have to also do any buttonholes. Okay, update time. Look at this. <gasps> It is very close to being finished and I have to say, I mean, I've been working on this uh, placket now. Uh, I have a little bit more to go. I've been working on it. I counted. Last night, I think I worked on maybe one and a half hours and today, like four hours. So it's like five and a half or six hours just like doing this. But I think it's definitely worth it because it does give it like lots of nice structure. Um, to the whole thing. I am just heading to uh, the cottage that me and Yuki stay in. Um, with this, I am going to make a blueberry pie uh, for today. Um, we have lots of blueberries in the forest, but I actually didn't pick this myself, but I bought them yesterday. Uh, I'm not like huge on baking, but I thought it would be fun and I love blueberry pie. Um, a few days ago, I asked on Instagram uh, for questions for you to send over. I haven't done like a Q&A in a long time, so I thought I'd uh, answer a couple of those as I attempt to make my blueberry pie and knit a little bit more. I also have to show you this arrived. I ordered this really nice knit project bag by Petit Knit. I've had one of her bags before, really like it, and this is just so handy. Then I always have my project in it. Um, one of the questions that came in from quite a few of you were that you asked if I'm happy or how I am. Oh, uh, thank you so much for asking. I am very happy. I definitely feel like this is a really great period in my life. There are so many things that I feel like I have clicked, both in like personal life, like very happy to spend so much time with my family here in the summer. And also like professionally, like the YouTube channel with my knit patterns, like everything that I've tried to build for so long. I was also feeling quite lost at some point, not really knowing what I wanted to do. But now after like pretty much six years of trying to do like build something of my own, um, it just feels like things are now really coming into place and lots of new exciting things. Like now it's more, there's so many ideas, so many things I want to do. So I guess the challenge is more trying to maybe find some people to help uh, me doing those, which I am uh, slowly taking steps in those uh, directions, like having people actually helping me, not trying to do everything myself. So yeah, feeling very good. Like, of course, like with, for example, this house, there's a lot of stuff to do with our house at home. So those kind of things are a little bit stressful sometimes, but mostly like really positive and nice things. My sister is sitting there actually working. So it's not just that she doesn't want to socialize, she actually is working, which brings me to my next question, which was quite a few of you ask how I make a living or if I also have another job or if this is like creating knit patterns, all I do. And um, how I make a living is I'm a full-time YouTuber and a knitwear designer. Um, that's kind of what I'm calling myself now, even though I don't know, it feels like so much fancier than I feel like it actually is. I feel it's still like trying to figure things out, but um, I am, I have like my own kind of business. Um, so an entrepreneur um, and I make a living selling the knit patterns I do. And then also with these YouTube videos, I get some money from the ads that you sometimes see like in the beginning or in the end of these and if I do some collaborations. So that's basically it. And then I did a few courses some years back. So but all of like the things that I kind of create myself and it hasn't been always like that. It's been a long way to come to a point where I can actually sustain and like pay myself doing the things I love. So it has definitely not opened overnight, but I am incredibly grateful for now having found a way that kind of works and also having like multiple kind of revenue streams so it's not all just tied to one thing or one platform um, and kind of 
seeing what works and then sometimes something i did these for example t-shirts a few years ago which was super nice i designed these prints and stuff um and it was like a really more like a passion project didn't get that much like actual money from it but that wasn't really the point um also then i did the book last year um also with the book it's not like you get like crazy rich <laughs> doing a book uh as probably most of you know but i learned so much with it and of course it then kind of the whole, my whole reach um getting like more known in the knitting world all those kinds of things so it's always a little bit different and trying to see what like makes most oh, makes most sense oh my god what's happening here um but yeah this is what i do for a living full time okay i need this then i need blueberries i have <laughs> one egg yes it's on <laughs> one other question that quite a a few of you asked were of course uh lots of knitting related questions and one i thought was really good that what is my kind of number one tip for new knitters my tip for when you're starting out i think um i would spend time trying to understand like the anatomy of knitting so what i mean essentially is like trying to really see how a knit stitch like what it looks like and a purl stitch and just um, because when you then run into like troubles or weird things happen, um, when you're following a pattern, if you're just kind of blindly following the pattern or a chart, but you don't really understand or you can't like see what's going on, it will be so much easier and more helpful if in the beginning already you've kind of tried things out. And um, because in the end, it's all really knit stitches and purl stitches. Sometimes we do like yarn overs, then we knit together or like an SSK or you increase, but it's all really like the knit stitch and the purl stitch so I would um, take some time to try to like understand how it looks what it's supposed to look like and when you have mistakes to not take it as serious like it is part of the process <laughs> I don't know I don't have one of those like rolling things I think you just do it like this <laughs> not convinced. <laughs> this is not a cooking channel for obvious reasons. Okay, I'm waiting for my pie to get baked. <laughs> Thought I'd come out here and sit and knit for a little bit and uh, reply some more questions. So one question that so many asked was if there will be another knitting book. The first knitting book I did, which is called Knit This, it came out about a year ago now, so August 2022. And when I was finished with that book, I just felt uh, very... Like I've, at that point I felt like, oh my God, I don't think I will ever do another knitting book because it was pretty overwhelming. But recently, and maybe like in spring, like I think that's around the time where I started to feel like, mm, like maybe, maybe I do have another knitting book in me and got like some ideas. So we'll see, we'll see. But I'm very happy that so many of you are interested and in ask that question because of course I take that as many of you maybe would want another knitting book from me. So that makes me really happy. Okay, I think it looks good. I don't wait, oh, was it open? Hmm, yeah, looks good. I mean, I think it needs a little bit more color. Okay, definitely needs a few more minutes. Uh, quite a lot of you asked um, if I have a favorite country or a place because um, I've lived abroad quite a bit and also like like to travel. Um, if I would have to live somewhere else than Finland, um, I think I would, because we were, I just went with my sister a few weeks ago, or is it a month ago already, uh, to Copenhagen, Denmark. I 
could see myself living there. I lived one year in Amsterdam when I was studying and that was super, super nice. But Amsterdam, um, it's a little, um, I felt like as a Scandinavian, I'm used to having lots of space around me. In Amsterdam, it's very, very crammed. <laughs> so I think, um, but I really like the vibe of Amsterdam. And I kind of feel like that vibe is in Copenhagen. Um, so yeah, Copenhagen is, I think, on my list at the moment. And um, to just visit, um, I think I would like to visit more like European cities. Uh, there's lots of European cities where I haven't been. For example, like Prague um, and Budapest and like these kind of places would be really nice to go to. Somebody asked for tips on, um, it wasn't finished, but like uh, tips for having a more even tension. So they said that sometimes it's really like really loose and then it starts to get really tight. I think uh, definitely like paying attention um, and being mindful about that helps. Then uh, you're knitting needles and knitting needles was also something that came up a lot. A lot of you wanted to know like what my favorite brands are. So I'll show you some, like one of the absolute favorite brands is, I don't know how you pronounce it, but Chiagu um, or Chagu. Um, they are just super, super great. They have always these like red cords, which is really nice. Like it doesn't get twisted. Like it stays really nice. Um, they are, I feel like super, super high quality, a little bit more on the expensive side, but definitely worth it. Then I really like Knit Pro. They have these, I think this is the Knit Pro. This is by Prüm. These ones that are like, have this darker wood. I don't know if this is like ginger wood. Why I started talking about this is my tip for if you have an uneven tension. Sometimes it's as easy as changing your knitting needles. Sometimes it's also the yarn, like with some yarns, you can just see it much clearer um, when it's uneven. And then of course, blocking when you soak it in water. I feel like that also definitely helps a lot. And oh yeah, one more actually tip is that if you're knitting back and forth, so flat, um, a lot of people purl a little bit looser than they knit. So then what I've sometimes done is that on the knit round, I've used a bigger needle. So for example, let's say a five millimeter, so US eight needle. And then on the purl row, if I have, for example, interchangeable, like a circular needle, I would have like a five millimeter on one end. And then I would put like, for example, a 4.5 millimeter, so that's a US seven or even a four millimeter, a US six on the other end. So that when I purl, I purl with a smaller size needle. So that becomes the tension kind of evens out. So that's maybe a good tip, especially if you find that it's very uneven, like her pearl and your knit rows. Oh, you also asked about Vico and Luna. Here we have Vico. He's very tired. He's been outside the entire morning and he likes to sleep here in our spare room. Um, he doesn't like to travel in this thing, but for some reason he really likes to sleep in it. Probably because it's like a little bit too tight and snug. And I think we have Luna. Yeah, she's here. Yeah, she's in there. I mean, there are lots of cozy places in this little house, but that's where she prefers to be. Hey, Luna. Hey. Luna is a Scottish straight. Um, so she's a pretty small cat. And then Vigo, he is 75% uh, ragdoll and then 25% British long hair. Oy. They are very tired right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, we think the pie is uh, ready. I don't actually have, you know, one of those like uh, toothpicks things. Um, so I'm gonna try my pie. Sacrificing a <laughs> double knitting, <laughs> double pointed knitting needle. Let's see if it's uh, ready. In you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I want to give you a quick update. Um, so I am really close to being finished 
And yesterday I actually tried to do these eye cords because um, I had this idea for maybe having just these threads instead of buttons. Um, and I tried it and I mean, it's really nice. I think it's very cute, but I think for this design, and since it's pink, I think maybe it's a little too cutesy. I mean, one idea would be to have like two more of those, um, but there's just something like, even though I like the idea a lot, I think for this, um, I think I'm gonna save it for another design essentially, because it just feels like it becomes a little bit too, yeah, just like too cute, a little bit too romantic. And I want maybe to use this kind of fastening system instead for something that would come higher up and maybe in another color as well. Um, so yeah, but I tried it out and this is how it looks, but I think I'm gonna go with traditional either buttons or, well, now I didn't do any buttonholes. So probably just uh, like some press buttons. Hello, hello. I have finally finished my cardigan. Yesterday I put these snap buttons and I didn't block it. I only steam blocked it, but I am super, super happy with the end result. I am now wearing my pink new cardi to go and watch the Barbie movie, which I wasn't actually when I chose this pink color. It wasn't a conscious choice. Um, but I thought it's a perfect garment to wear to the Barbie movie. I'm gonna go there with my sister, enjoy some popcorn. Um, I always feel like it's very cold in the cinema, so I think it's good that I have this cardi on. Definitely gonna turn this into a pattern, thinking about maybe even making a whole tutorial for it. So let's see. Um, for I think autumn, this is like a perfect, very kind of basic cardi. You could even make it longer. I definitely think that I maybe want to make a longer one. It may be like, a, I think a light gray would be really nice, like some kind of a melange color. Here is how far my sister got on her sweater. I think it's really nice choice of colors and she's been working on it a lot. Not quite yet finished. Maybe we'll get to see it finished soon but this is as far as she got on it. So yeah, that is essentially the end of this video. Gonna go have a movie night with my sister and I've been to the cinema for ages. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I hope to see you in a video soon again. Um, and you can always come check out me on Instagram. I'm over at Kutubakika over there where I share lots of things that I'm working on in my stories and on my feed. So go and come and say hi and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye. Barbie movie time. <laughs>